Hi guys, so in this short video, I'm going to try and talk about the muscles of the larynx in under five minutes, a fairly important topic for both entrance exams and university exams. So let's get started. So the laryngeal muscles can be broadly divided into two types, intrinsic muscles of the larynx and extrinsic muscles of the larynx. Intrinsic muscles are those muscles that lie within the laryngeal apparatus and extrinsic muscles are those muscles that lie outside the laryngeal apparatus but act on the larynx. Okay. So intrinsic muscles are then further divided into two, can be divided into two muscles acting on the vocal cords and muscles acting on the laryngeal inlet. Now coming to the extrinsic muscles, that is the muscles that lie outside the larynx but act on the larynx. So they are further divided into elevators of the larynx, muscles that raise the larynx and depressors of the larynx, muscles which pull down the larynx. So the elevators of the larynx are just two and they are mylohyoid and stylohyoid. Remember these lie above the level of the larynx, so they pull the larynx up and depressors of the larynx are nothing but your strap muscles. So coming to the important part of this discussion, and that is the muscles acting on the vocal cords. So the muscles acting on the vocal cords can be classified into four types of muscles, the adductors. Okay, imagine this is the vocal cord. So the adductors of the vocal cord are those muscles that bring the vocal cords together, right? Abductors of the vocal cords, the second type of muscles are the muscles that bring, split the vocal cords. So adductors bring the vocal cords together, abductors split the vocal cords. So they can be divided into mainly adductors, abductors, and also tensors, which make the vocal cord tense. They stretch the vocal cord and make it tense and make the voice more still. And relaxers, these relax the vocal cord. So tensor and relaxer, tensor and relaxer. So relaxers make the vocal cord uh, relax and tensors make them tense and make the voice more shrill. Okay. So all you have to remember is there are three adductors and one abductor, one relaxer and one tensor. So it's totally six muscles, three adductors, one tensor, one relaxer and one abductor. So the adductors are the lateral cricoarytenoid, transverse arytenoid and thyroarytenoid muscles. And all three adductors are supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Okay, the abductor, the muscle which splits the vocal cord is only one. And this is the most important thing from an entrance exam point of view and also to know and that there's only a single abductor and that abductor is the posterior cricoarytenoid, which is also supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Coming to the tensors and relaxers, the tensor is the cricothyroid and this is the only laryngeal muscle, the only intrinsic laryngeal muscle supplied by the external laryngeal nerve. All the other muscles are supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So the cricothyroid, again, entrance exam important, is the only muscle supplied by the external laryngeal nerve. It's a tensor of the vocal cord and it makes the voice more shrill. So when the ELN or the external laryngeal nerve is injured, the cricothyroid stops acting and the voice becomes hoarse. So hoarseness of voice, voice change is a feature of the injury of the external laryngeal nerve. Now coming to all the other muscles, the vocalis, which is the relaxer, the tense abductors and adductors, all of these are supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. And of these, the most important is the posterior cricoarytenoid because it abducts the vocal cord, splits the vocal cord. So when the recurrent laryngeal nerve is injured, particularly when both sides, bilateral recurrent laryngeal injury is there, the uh, vocal cords lose their ability to split. So they get stuck in the median or paramedian position. They lose their ability to split. And this can lead to asphyxia, that is breathing difficulties, strider, aphonia and whatnot. So bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve is can be fatal and it requires an emergency tracheostomy. So the abductor is supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve and when the RLN or recurrent laryngeal nerve is injured, it is these abductors that get injured and there's a issue that comes about because of them. So aphonia, asphyxia, whatnot. So external laryngeal nerve injury causes only voice change. Unilateral RLN injury also usually only causes voice change, but bilateral RLN injury, RLN injury can be fatal. Lastly, not so important, but muscles acting on the laryngeal inlet, there are muscles that open the laryngeal inlet by pulling the epi uh, epiglottic fold up and uh, muscles that close the laryngeal inlet. So the openers are the thyroarytenoid single muscle and the, the muscles that close the laryngeal inlet include the oblique arytenoid and the iri epiglotticus. So here are some images where you can uh, see the muscles. Here you can see the transverse arytenoid, which was your uh, uh, adductor, adductor of the adductor, uh, yeah, adductor and the uh, posterior cricoarytenoid here, which uh, is the abductor which splits the vocal cords so basically you can just see uh, them in these images and you can find these images in google i wanted to keep this in less than five minutes so you, you can just get the classification for your exam and know which nerve supplies what uh, you can see the images on google to have a better understanding so anyway i put them here too so thank you and see you in the next video